So this is what Professor Shivkumar had said, that each one of us requires some external audit, without which we tend to relax. As far as the class attendance is concerned, I am now beginning to realize the significance of statement by institutions that 75% or 85% attendance is compulsory. And uh, if that appears only as a statement, it has no impact. But if it is implemented with students being detained at the end of the semester, not permitted to appear for exam, etc. And if that is communicated well, then the attendance is larger. I am always concerned about insisting on physical attendance because it does not, in my opinion, mean much. However, there seems to be some merit. If I am forced to attend a class, then since I cannot close the sound waves impacting on my ears, or I cannot permanently close my eyes for the entire hour, except when I have not slept for a couple of nights and therefore I am sleeping. There is some merit in saying that an external audit of the type attendance is compulsory does help. Is that correct? Is, is it the general human behavior? This saying is by Professor Shivkumar, he said it about 20 years ago, uh, that each one of us requires an external audit and that helps. So is that a correct communication? Is that a correct statement? What is your opinion? I mean, if you have to speak statistically, this is a class of about 130 students. And these are not ordinary 130 students. These are all MTech PhD students of the great IIT Bombay. That means people have struggled hard to come here. These are obviously leadership material. Now, even amongst the leadership material, if people don't feel like attending a class because there is no compulsion, then what would happen to ordinary mortals across the country? So, in my concluding session today, I wish to emphasize that what Professor G. Shukumar stated probably reflects the human behavior better than anything else. And therefore, we should, in fact, he stated something else. He said, Fatai, there are situations where we can actually neglect external audit, we can ignore. But it is not good for us. Even if there are no external audit mechanisms available, we should create some. We should create some. So that there is a pressure, external pressure on our mind to do certain things. Does that make sense? Because you see, people at your level, you cannot be forced by compulsions per se. So unless you make a compulsion on your own, so creating external audit is probably a, a good act. There was one observation by a student that the TED talk assignment, which was given by Firuza, uh, does not have uniformity. Some of the TED talks are longer and some TED talks are shorter. I don't know, anybody here who has written that mail? No, someone else has made that observation. I have the following counter. Actually, it is very funny to have to give an assignment on TED Talks. TED Talks is something that people should enjoy weaving and listening to because they are exciting things, interesting things. Uh, and the statement made is, it is very unfair. So, <laughs> I would just like to make two observations in case you meet the person who wrote that mail or I will send a mail. First of all, life is not about fairness. Nature is not fair. Life is not fair. Life is as is. It comes its own way, does it things its own way. And secondly and more importantly, if there is a longish state talk, which, because of my roll number, I am supposed to view. Should I view it because of the external compulsion or should I view it because 
I believe it would be interesting and useful. Of course, I hope it is only an individual observation. Uh, you want to say something? No, uh, I am sure the fellow is at least as smart as us. So therefore, he would not have watched the TED Talks. But what he would have done is, he would have downloaded, I mean, he would have gone to the web, uh, website of that TED Talk and observed the duration. <laughs> but still, the point is well made, that if I spend time to visit 10 sites, to note down very carefully the duration of each of those 10 TED Talks, spend time in analyzing, the Fatak has been very unfair with me because of my peculiar roll number. In this duration, I think I would have watched that entire TED Talk. You are very right. Comparison stinks. Once you start comparing with others, there is a problem. All right. I, I would like a general opinion poll of the 10 people who are present here. Is this slot okay? 8 9 9.30, 10.30? I thought it was an ideal slot. You are free from this and rest of the day you are available. But some of mornings don't seem to happen in time in IIT Pawai campus. The 8.30 is... No, no, but you will notice that even for the class at 9.30, uh, people do come at 9.40, 9.45, etc. I think it is, it is our generic problem of Indians. So, it would not be impossible for people to genuinely believe that a 9.30 lecture means I should leave hostel at around 9.30. So the travel time is not accounted for. Same thing about 8.30. I am sure you put that time at 10.30, the, still the same thing will happen. It's, I think we need to discipline ourselves. That's, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yes. I see. So they attend all, all other classes. There is a difference between the first lecture of a day and some subsequent lectures. So for example, I come to this class, say 10 minutes late. But since the class leaves me in time and I don't have time to go back to hostel or do something, I will automatically attend the next class in time. So should we keep a dummy class? <laughs> The beginning of the day. Yeah, but people are so smart, they will recognize it after the one lecture of that dummy class and will start missing it completely. <laughs> Any suggestions on uh, how to communicate the usefulness of such discussion sessions? I am asking you because since I have decided to stay here for two more years, I think I am destined to take this course at least two more times in the coming two years. So I would like to have your feedback on how I could, yeah. Huh. yeah. Before, if the class is divided into multiple uh, components or stages, before uh, every stage, just before uh, the uh, that lecture, we can have a short like one minute uh, trailer kind of thing uh, uploaded to Moodle where people can just see and see if the topic interests them. So the ones who are at, le at least interested in those topics will definitely come to those classes. Okay. So what you are suggesting is, if I could chalk out the plan for the complete semester saying this is what is going to be covered in this sequence and then people can decide whether that particular set series of topics makes sense to them or not? Yes, just before that particular component, just give, just one class before. Oh, just before, not uh, at the not beginning at of the, the semester. Yeah, if you give it at the beginning, they'll forget by that time they come in. He is trying to discover novel methods of enthusing students to attend. Okay, that is one way. Sir, I believe that it is uh, all about uh, the, it is all about how students perceive what is the student's perception of the usefulness of the course or, or how much they gain out of attending a lecture? 
I'll give you an example. I've interacted with many UG students, UG CSE students, and at least in two courses that I've taken with them, I realized that they would not attend any lecture because they said that the professor X, Y, Z, whoever, is teaching too slow. So at least one reason given was that person teaches very slow and whatever he teaches is out of some lecture notes or book that is already available. So I can cover the same material in half an hour. Why do I need to go and spend one hour of time? So it's all, in my head, it's all about the usefulness or what, I, what I'm going to gain out of this lecture that, by the way, MTechs and PhDs are more, um, if you compare it with UGs, MTechs and PhDs are really more um, punctual in attending lectures, at least other lectures. I don't know why it has fallen off sharp, sharply this year. But yeah, so the point that I wanted to make is, uh, I think we need to be able to first communicate that it is important for you to attend somehow. So, so once people are convinced, they'll be doing it without uh, needing the stick. Uh, I think it is something beyond communication is actually the uh, assimilation and conviction within, which is more important. Uh, communication can be done in multiple ways. Oh, uh, the state which I come from, Madhya Pradesh, as a saying, I believe it is there everywhere. That you can take the horse You cannot force a horse to drink water. You can take the horse to the water, you can bring water to the horse, but that's about it. Ultimately, it's the horse's mind which decides whether I should drink or not drink. To a similar extent, when extremely capable people are collected together where each one is capable of taking one's own decisions and live with the consequences. I mean, that is what growing up is all about. And we are dealing with grown-ups, we are not dealing with school kids. And therefore each one decides in one's own way. What you said, by the way, makes sense in another statistics that is prevalent. 95% of the people who attend online courses, these are the statistics, view majority of the videos in 1.5x or 2x, not at the normal speed. I mean, have you tried that, viewing a video at 2x or multiple speed? Uh, the point is that, and this of course presupposes that the captions are being displayed. That means the, con the contents are also being displayed on the side as text. And text you can read much faster. So people tend to read the text and because they do that, they do not spend time in listening to that person really. They just read that text. Curiously, if you just post text and there is no video, then it is not necessary that people will read that text. So life seems to be very funny. I mean, the learning behavior, forget of the masses, but of individuals, is not very easy to capture. And I believe that what Professor G. Shiv Kumar says is true even for learners. So even an individual learner requires some external audit, like a class, exam, or something like that. Professor Kandan tried that in his flipped classroom by conducting a quiz in every lecture. I and Supratik did that for CS 101. We had 100% attendance, of course. Because curiously, whether undergraduate students or postgraduate students, if there is a half mark or one mark associated, which counts to your, towards your credit or A, A, B, B, B grade, etc., then somehow people tend to attend. That is correct, isn't it? So nobody misses uh, uh, such thing. Uh, we do not have, unfortunately, that uh, privilege for this course because it's a non-credit course. And. Uh, would it make sense, therefore, to say that just how, how do you attend the institute lecture? The institute elective? Uh, no, this, this course, there is an institute component, right? 791. Yeah, that has a 80% attendance uh, criteria. Oh, and attendance is compulsory. And, strictly and that is enforced. People, and they strictly fail people if it is uh, below 80%. Even if it is one lecture below 80%. Oh, fail. Wow. So, uh, who is the coordinator there? 
Professor Parthasarthi. Oh, Professor Parthasarthi. But there is a team of instructors, right? Uh, I think Professor Sundar was also involved. And uh, uh, Viren said he is involved. Right. So, so many people are there. Now, you would be, of course, amongst those who would attend, not because of that 80 percent compulsion. But do you believe that largely the students who actually attend do benefit from that uh, attending the lecture? Right. So, there was this one lecture which was conducted by Professor Asim Tiwari. Okay. So, he had conducted a lecture on how to, how do you, so when you are reading a research paper, what do you exactly want to look into the paper? So, what, uh, I mean, how different, so the points being how to find whether the paper or what is the new content of the paper, how is it different from the other papers and what's a way of writing the, um, I mean, conducting the experiments, writing the observations and all those things. So that was really helpful. So things like that. Then uh, then another point was when Professor Sahana Murthy, she explained about how do you give a elevator? How do you, how, what's the process of giving a very short description in a, a short description of your entire maybe one year work or two years work in like one or two minutes or something. So that was really, I mean, we found that uh, interesting. So yeah, there were a few lectures which were really interesting and uh, I guess they are helpful to the people if they really want to you know, uh, understand those things. So it all depends upon three things I believe. The topic under discussion, the teacher who makes it interesting or otherwise and the usefulness that is found by the students about the entire These three things if they combine well. The point is, suppose I am a student, now how do I anticipate whether these three things will happen in a class or not? Because I have to anticipate, convince myself that it will probably happen and then attend, right? Oh, I see. Huh. I see. Topics are known. And who is going to teach what topic is also displayed. I see. So that combined with the advice from seniors will be a useful input for a student to decide to attend. Of course, when 80 percent attendance is compulsory, I have to be there any which way. But rather than only being physically present, if I see the significance of that topic, teacher combination, I will probably be more alert. I think if uh, all of this has to do with the alertness of the mind uh, that you prepare yourself for any activity, whether it is attending lecture or solving problem or discussing or something. Am I right? So how do you maximize uh, the alertness of the mind and how do you sustain the alertness of the mind of a learner? I think that's a good poser. Let me just write it down because I'll forget it. I believe this would be the million dollar question, right, for any educational system. How do you build and sustain? It's almost like how to build and sustain collaborative communities, which is part of this. So, how do you sustain the alertness? Some good presentations uh, with some audiovisual content and maybe mainly that whatever topic is being discussed, uh, because of internet these days, Almost on those topics, we can also go and search things. So, what is the additional thing which the lecturer is providing? That is, say for example, there is something that the lecturer through his or her own personal experience knows which readily is not available just by googling it. So, some, some USP should be there that makes that thing kind of memorable, even like uh, some, some special point. So, uh, rather than plain slides, like taking it from some uh, internet source or some book. That should be helpful. So, the session should be made interesting. Should be made useful.
something unique, something which I will not otherwise find. I believe that, uh, or something that I've noticed uh, over many years, that uh, the reason why some students uh, or all students find some uh, classes interesting is because somehow uh, the teacher is able to convey the usefulness. It's not really usefulness, it's just that, uh, for example, if uh, I'm teaching something, I should also be uh, able to tell them, well, this is where you use this, right? For example, so uh, right at the beginning of this uh, uh, class uh, or course, you had made this promise that I promise you that uh, we'll record a lecture now and we'll record a, a video later and then I promise you that you'll have improved by the end of this. That's a, uh, that's a wonderful promise and it actually uh, creates… Motivates uh, people. Yeah, it motivates people. But then somewhere along the line I believe that people were not able to link how whatever is being taught currently is going to be useful later. Okay. So that I think is very important. Good point. And there are two examples of that. Um, please don't mind my saying it. No, but, no, no. Uh, I think that uh, the way we teach um, the lectures on punctuation and the way we uh, and the other lecture on functional specifications. Hmm. I mean, there was there was completely no motivation of why should somebody attend those lectures and how is it really going to help people later. By the way, in HS791 also there was, uh, yesterday there was this lecture on email communication which I found that not many people were interested because people don't really realize that emails are something that are very important. So yeah, that has to be communicated. Good point. I, because I have worked for some years, th that is why I know that it is essential that you compose your emails nicely. Otherwise, motivation is very important. Very good point. Uh, right, sir. So, one thing is the poll and uh, secondly, as you mentioned, the applicability. So, for example, if a lecture is something like how do you need to uh, read a research paper, that is something which students find interesting because it is related to them. So, uh, but, but uh, there was a lecture on mind maps, no, like we cannot find how it is useful for us in our curriculum. So, before the lecture starts, one should tell that this is how it will help you in your studies. So, that will actually motivate us more. A poll is sometimes a very dangerous thing to do because often when I participate in my poll, in any poll, I am not necessarily reflecting my thought out judgment. I am tempted to act instinctively and therefore uh, how do you, because I mean there is a huge lot of debate on democracy for example. So, I don't know whether you have heard of Greek democracy, where everybody is expected to put forward their opinion on everything that goes on. And that could result in a chaos. That is what Greek philosophers observed, that earlier in the city-states which emerged in the Greek civilization, uh, there used to be a collection of all citizens in the evening and the issues will be raised and everybody has to say something or the other and often chaos resulted. So, uh, going even to a smaller extent of a class, a poll is useful only if every participant in the poll actually reflects on the issue and then gives the poll. Uh, I believe it cannot be guaranteed so very easily, particularly if you have to conduct a very large number of polls successively. Sometime or the other, the mind gives up, saying, uh, akadam, takadam, takadam, put this, put that, put that, something like that. Wouldn't it happen? So, one has to, uh, but I understand the basic need. So, what you are suggesting is, there should be a mechanism to collect genuine feedback. Now, poll is the natural thing that occurs to us. Would there be any alternative to poll? I'd like to add from my experience uh, in the army, mm. what I have seen the difference in teachings in the classes or the teachings what we conduct training in our institutions is uh, we try to divide the lecture in 
parts or the topics which are going to be covered and that are conveyed beforehand to the students and they are available so my personal experience when i see and compare it with the classes which i attend or the lectures which i view online if they are organized and conveyed in starting that this is what you are going to learn out of this then automatically interest start developing and you are able to relate each thread or each topic from start to the end that's uh, i think what has been taught to us in this course or 791 at when we are writing a research paper we divide ourselves in topics Correct. and then we relate Correct. if and the same usefulness is uh, if is applied in the lectures which are conducted in the class we are trying to convey a topic and if they are related in the sense in under some heads then students will automatically will be able to relate that has been discussed somewhere else also that in the mind it goes away in between you are not able to correlate what is happening so that's what we have been following in our organization where the topics which are being covered are listed on the site or they are visible to everyone at every time so that they can, and once the topics gets completed they know that this is done now this is started so they can correlate now if somebody knows something beforehand then he may not pay attention to that topic but if he doesn't know something how or, or some part of the topic then he will of course pay attention to that topic so we might have audience from different field which may know something which may not know something so if that is done probably the interest level will be generated somehow good point actually uh, what i feel is uh, actually 8:30 class timing is good for me and for few other people but those of uh, us i mean who work or prefer to work at nights and all other they just as, i mean they just ignore that there is not a credit course i mean there is no compulsion of attendance so why i should go i can just view some lectures or something and i can just go away but if all non credit courses are in afternoon session say then i mean they can find some time and they can at least think of ki uh, i should go and at least sit there <laughs> if not <laughs> present I, i mean if not my full mind is present there at least i should go and sit there because they will be here near around uh, i partly that is just a suggestion yeah no i partly agree with you but i do not entirely agree with you i think it's a matter of discipline i am also a nishachar i rarely sleep before 3 o'clock and i do not normally get up before 8:30 but when i have a 8:30 session my wife kicks me off the bed at 7 o'clock even when my wife is not around the alarm clock kicks me out it's a question of mental discipline i think i i don't think it is related to Uh, so, uh, if there is a credit course or something where i mean people will go and they will have a i mean uh, no, they may more, more importantly yeah. if there is a quiz at 8:30 don't the nishachars attend it yeah everyone will go everyone there. will attend so why so again the question of shiv kumar's observation that external audit helps yes i mean i'm i'm just telling that you do not want some external audit and you also want people to attend lectures yeah. right So that so, could be a, of course, a reason. Like in the end, it boils down to the interest. What interest the individual, whether it is marks or whether it's learning. Either way, and both force interest. Okay. But what we would like is for learning to force the interest above all. Now that apparently is uh, is not a. truthful statement about humanity in general that interest alone i mean we talk of self learning example uh, the great eklavya but there has been exactly one eklavya in 4000 years of indian history so it's not easy to sustain on one's own the enthusiasm and curiosity some extent that is why that uh, shiva's remark on external audit uh, i i felt it was very apt There are two unique things about Shiva. His first email address in IIT Bombay was Shiva at Kailash. 
which was probably the most appropriate email address anybody could have because Lord Shiva is supposed to be residing in Kailash. Our first server was named Kailash. So his address was like that. The second one is it. He wants to say something. So re-examine 830 slot, but more importantly, what is being stated is combination of self-interest and some external compulsion. That that would sort of help, yeah. So what I feel is, uh, whatever points we do right here, it do not make any sense until and unless we make attendance compulsory or make it a credit course. It is because till now we have been trained in such a way that we give importance only to the things which are uh, posed upon us and which has some credit. So if at this point we want to change, uh, it, it is very difficult and it won't happen. And uh, one more thing I have observed is, uh, I myself has, uh, have forced myself to go for a HS791 course and uh, after going I uh, feel that yes, today's uh, topic was interesting and today I learned something. So it was by force, not by my interest. So when I go, then I get to know that it is interesting. So what he's saying is that initially, I, I might initiate an activity because of the compulsion. But once I participate in that activity, I will end up finding it useful in some way or the other. But I am unable to initiate that activity based on the assumption that it will be very useful to me. And the main reason is, we have been trained from the childhood to work due to compulsion right from the first standard, second standard, everything. And we cannot undo the learning of 11 years of schooling plus, in your case, four years of graduate studies, which is also part of compulsion. Because in all engineering colleges, science colleges also, I think, attendance is compulsory, exams, credits, etc., etc. It's a good point he makes. Uh, it appears to me that the overall opinion of the entire audience is that you need to use a combination of attempting to motivate people in advance by giving outlines or dividing topics, etc. And plus, adding a, an element of compassion. So both together will work. Any one will not be useful. Yeah. Sir, I would like to add that uh, at least like in IIT, like one of the most premier institutes in country, we would not like to like totally encourage this kind of behavior because like if we truly want to make India into like a developed country, we see that ultimately what's required is initiative by people. We need entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs like they are not forced to work into something. They work by their own interest, their own drive, out of their own choice. So this kind of a uh, behavior where we are encouraging uh, like uh, working due to compulsion, at least in premier institutes, if in a place like this, things like this are like encouraged a lot, other institutes will follow and it will become a norm. So I think uh, a combination is a better better thing. In, in fact, a combination is the only thing that will work. A whole lot also depends upon the generic environment prevailing in a particular place or an institution. Uh, even in the developed countries, by the way, it's always a combination. For example, plagiarism is not permitted. Students fail in the course if they copy. They actually fail. That means there are people who still copy. They actually have supervised tests because there are people who will be tempted to look into the neighbor's thing. The human mind can be tempted very easily to take shortcuts. And therefore, some external audit or compulsion is a must. But whether to base it entirely on that, that is not a good thing. Attendance like many places is not compulsory. So, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam had quoted a beautiful example. I think I had mentioned it, but let me repeat it. It also depends upon the environment. 
So you would like things to be primarily, at least in institutions like ours, to be primarily determined based by the initiative that people will take. Yes, so right. you expect everyone to take the initiative. Let me tell you, it does not happen because of this reason. You see, we have been trained for too many years not to take initiative. We have been trained to submit to certain rules, procedures, etc. We get used to that and our mind therefore stops taking initiative. Same thing about creativity. There are schools which actually give you less marks if you don't exactly reproduce the answer that the teacher had written on the board. Now, how can we things be more stupid than that? Because any wording that you use can be reworded, can perhaps be better worded. But if that is the rule, and that uh, sticks in my mind, so I won't do that. And therefore, I will forget my creativity. I think in some ways, like this, this can uh, relearning needs to be done once for someone uh, comes here. And to some extent, what it, how it can be promoted is by providing some kind of a like other kind of incentive rather than like compulsion by having a bonus kind of mechanism. Like if you do, if you don't do, it's fine. But if you do, then you'll get some kind of a bonus. In CS 101, we found the AP grade. You know, you have A, 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 B, A, C, and there is an AP grade provision that worked as a bonus. Uh, Supratik decided to conduct a contest and it says uh, only those people who clear this contest will be eligible for AP grade provided they get an A grade otherwise. What was surprising to find is that a large number of people who eventually landed up with an AB or even a BB grade actually participated because they did not know what grade they will get. But the incentive to be recognized as an AP grade caused almost 65, 70 students out of the class of 400 to participate in that contest. It was a tough problem that he had designed and there were a fairly good number of solutions. In fact, I remember still there are two people who solved that problem correctly but did not get an AP because they did not get A, they got an AB. But you are very right, so some kind of a bonus. Now, here is a critical question. For a course which has no credits, for a course which has no grade, except pass and fail, what kind of bonus can one think of? And there is one more point which you made, I will write it down here as de learn to reach this level, right? Yeah, you, you had made that. I had two things to say. Mm. The first one is related to the poll that you said, some mechanism of feedback. Huh. So there's this very interesting thing that uh, Professor Sethi does in 791. Huh. So at the end of his lectures, he sends out a mail saying uh, that you need to send me a small email in which you have to tell me what you claim to have learned out of this. Oh, I see. Which I think is a very interesting exercise. It does not make it compulsory, but if somebody tries to do it, you really have to think hard and find out what, what, I, what I claim to have learned out of this. I think that's a wonderful thing to be uh, implemented in every course. But in, in my course, people don't even read emails. So, <laughs> writing email is the higher level of activity. Yeah, so that is the point, right? If people find the course interesting and if they find it engaging, they would really they want to just... attempt that. And and the other thing uh, about uh, the point that he made, that uh, I believe that uh, one way of making the course interest uh, courses like this uh, communication skills, where uh, there's no set curriculum uh, as such. Maybe we could ask uh, students what is it that they expect out of this course at the outset. So what is it that you expect out of this course and then come up with suggestions as to how you feel uh, you could, uh, something could be done to improve you in so and so area. So people might have different suggestions out of which uh, the most common ones could be implemented. Very good point. There was, I think in some other forum, 
professor kavi arya was mentioning that um, uh, with students who come to him for internships e antra or something they actually ask them to read novels english novels just yeah. to improve their yeah. communication skills yeah. so i don't know how much we could do it in this course but yeah that could be one of the exercises that basically ask people what they want to do uh, related to the point of learning uh, reading english novels i would like to point out that in and and this is a generic statement about the mtech class about 10 to 15% of our students in mtech phd level not so many phd but certainly at the mtech level have are extremely poor in english extremely poor now this is not a course in english would it make sense therefore just like uh, we used to have a mechanism for uh, students who clear je but are poor in english and therefore are poor in physics maths etc they used to be given a one year makeup course they would be admitted to iit but for them the course would be six years and not five years and now five years instead of four years and they are given one year coaching in physics chemistry maths and english is just coaching there is no courses or something they are registered for one course or two courses just for them to get a feel for what a competitive course in iit is and those grades are carried forward in their subsequent one of the courses used to be cs 101 which i used to take almost routinely and i would find that the students major problem was in understanding english lectures they come from an environment where they have studied like i studied in hindi all my life there are people who studied in their native languages and had problems so we had to conduct special lectures in hindi and ask them to review the recorded lectures in english so that their english improves now coming to this class since cs department has decided to hold the communication skills course in the second year would it make sense to discreetly ask all first year mtech students when they join asking them if they wish they can give a competency test in english just your ability to articulate yourself in english and if they are advised ke hey, baba your english is not good enough you will not be able to benefit from the entire mtech program as much as you could otherwise and therefore in the first semester itself including the winter take some corrective action and if that corrective action is facilitated by uh, cs department jointly maybe with hss would it help such 10 15% students what is what is your opinion uh, why only for cs uh, you can make it for all branches yeah i will suggest it to parsarthi but i was thinking of implementing it from this july for the cs students at least why i said cs is because that is something that is doable at the departmental level there need not be a conscientious and so on but you are very right because if you take let's say 10% students out of 100 students about 10 to 12 students definitely need corrective measures and there could be another 15 who would benefit but there is no course or no such thing so we we have to keep it optional however how about conducting a plain competency test in english articulation at the beginning of the first semester itself for everyone and for one's own benefit i mean there are no marks or anything like that so i give a test i come in as a first year mtech student i give that test and i make my own judgment and then the department says ke baba agar itna score se acha hai to theek hai nahi to kuch gadbad hai here is a corrective mechanism that will be made available by the department you use it at your own discretion would that help yeah one more suggestion is uh, if it is an english or uh, language proficiency course uh, many times we see that uh, mainly actually undergraduate students but even mtech students many times they do write these like exams like gre toefl cat once they are done with their courses here so the amount of enthusiasm or interest they display in those learning those things because that has got a like direct impact on their uh, 
post uh, IIT experience, they definitely take a lot of interest in that. So, in some manner, uh, if those courses, some kind of courses are facilitated by IIT itself or some external, what people do is they actually go and subscribe to some external uh, agency like say IMS or some other uh, uh, GRE profile, some uh, clan. So, those agencies, some kind of facilitation done by the institute itself, I, I think would have a much greater uh, attendance rate than just a course. Okay, I just realized that we are two minutes past our end time. So, we'll close here. Thank you very much for the entire course and enjoy the semester. Incidentally, uh, although you need not circulate this information, but the TED talk uh, submission, which is all submissions are obligatory, I am not going to look at it from the point of view of passing or failing students. There were two students who had not submitted the LATIC assignment. Uh, I don't remember their names. Uh, but one of them was uh, wrongly pinpointed here. I forget the name. The second person, is he here today? No. The second student, so please, if you meet him, apologize to him on my behalf. He has submitted all assignments except this one. As compared to our first friend, who has rarely submitted any assignments. So, while those two names were mentioned explicitly in the class, I extend my apology to the second student uh, whose name came up only because that particular assignment of LATIC files he had not submitted. Otherwise, he is one of the most regular students and that is why he looked very baffled when he was named. I can now sense that. So, I am sorry for that. And uh, uh, I propose to submit uh, the grades the moment uh, uh, the ASC makes that interface available. In case there is any problem or anyone does not, so just check that, I mean, you of course are there on the Moodle. See, the problem is, it's almost like asking, please raise your hands if you are absent. Now, how do I know if there are some two people whose names do not appear anywhere in the interface, but they are registered by some query? I do not know how to handle that. But except that, of course, everybody passes in my course. Thank you so much.